Husbands who complain about having zero sex have no idea how the female sex drive actually works, and the complaining makes it much worse. <laughs> My favorite thing is when couples come in and they haven't had sex in a year, and I ask why, and she looks at him and says, because he hasn't asked. And he says, well, I kind of hinted, and you just never seemed interested. And she says, well, when was the last time you spent time with me? Well, why would I spend time with you if you're not having sex with me? And that right there is exactly the spiral. Women, after one year, their sex drive switches from bonding with you mode to long-term stability and mate retention. If you have given her the adequate emotional bonding, and if she has decent enough, secure enough attachment to receive that bonding, her sex drive will go way up because her brain says, keep this man around and have as many of his babies as I can. We must have 15 babies in the next week. That's what her brain will say. And I've seen couples, I've worked with couples in their 60s who come in, and sorry for this mental image, but they come in having very little sex and they leave after a few sessions having sex three or four or five times a week in their 60s because... They improve their actual emotional intimacy, which leads to better non-sexual physical intimacy, which then leads overwhelmingly to sexual physical intimacy. It should begin in your emotional bonding and connection. It will drive her sex drive through the roof, and she will not only be receptive to you, she will be chasing you through the house. Yeah, you had another tweet that said, at about 6 to 12 months into a relationship, the female sex drive switches from attraction and bonding to long-term stability. That means emotional intimacy, trust, and predictability. Mm -hmm. Many couples lack these three things, so her sex drive tanks. Neither person fully gets why. So many women that I work with do not understand how their own sex drive works. I, ha I, I have clients who come in and they say, Adam, I don't know why I don't have a high sex drive. I just feel like my husband is mad at me for not having sex with her, but I just kind of don't want to. What's the problem? And I say, well, you don't want to because he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing as your husband. And they say, oh, thank you for saying that. And I say, okay, well, what would it take? Well, I don't know, just like maybe more time together. And so we run through a list of exactly like 12 to 15 things of what spending time together should look like. And then we give him a measurable list of do this, do this, do this, do this often, this amount of time, this level, do this. And they do it for a week or two. And all of a sudden her sex drive goes through the roof and they're very happy. Mm. So I remember reading in Jonathan Haidt's The Happiness Hypothesis about the passionate and companionate uh, mm -hmm. a, a two styles of, of it's not quite attachment, I think it's uh, attraction perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there an equivalent for men? For these emotional intimate bonding like this? Yeah, so you've said that with women around about six to 12 months, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the, the arousal response occurs due to different yeah, stimuli. stimuli. Is there an equivalent <laughs> for men? There is. Um, Yes. Okay. Here's what it mostly is. I'm trying to frame it. People don't usually ask that. So let's talk about this. The male sex drive typically works. If we have resources, then we want to go reproduce because we have enough resources to protect whatever would happen if we reproduced. Yeah, that's a cheap way of saying it. But the male brain has to say, look, if I'm going to throw endless resources at something, I need to make sure it's actually going to be sustainable and that everything is going to continue the way it needs to. So if a woman is betraying him, if a woman is completely anti-maternal, usually, if a woman is actively hurting him and attacking him, or if his stress level is overwhelmingly high from his environment, that's where the man's sex drive typically goes down. It takes pretty significant factors of this is not sustainable, for a man's sex drive to tank that hard. It's it's tough, not impossible, but tough. I do know that bonding through oxytocin actually helps men achieve faster erection and more lasting erections. So oxytocin is very important for men. It's the bonding hormone you get through emotional intimacy. But it is very important, but men can still endure without it. It takes a lot to turn off the male sex drive. We're a little bit more simple creatures, I think, than we when are. it comes to that. What was, what was it that you taught me about the role of vasopressin for men during sex? So the research shows that when men have orgasms, it's a, it works a little bit different than, when, than how women have orgasms. Women will have orgasms and they their orgasm happens largely due to an overwhelming supply of oxytocin that causes massive constrictions through the uterus and same, same hormone that causes um, labor and birth. Uh, we have a synthetic version that we use called Pitocin that actually induces labor. It's synthetic oxytocin. And women flood with that during sex, and that's what leads to one orgasm, which then leads to another, and then leads to 10, and then leads to her having a toe tag because she's died. But that's what it's supposed to be. Men 
have one orgasm if they get any and oxytocin may or may not affect the male brain as much as it does the female brain it seems to more be there to move the semen along and he may bond a bit with you through oxytocin but men have far more receptors for vasopressin vasopressin is the hormone responsible for bonding when you achieve a mission together you solve a problem together you ac accomplish a goal together you know, men are goal oriented. Who could have predicted that? If he accomplishes in sex with you and says, we're going to give you 10 orgasms, most women respond by saying, no, let's not do that. Or why the arbitrary number? He is actually setting a goal with you, wants to achieve it and wants to high five with you. And that is actually going to bond him to you more than his own orgasm is going to bond him to you. If you go with him and accomplish a mission together, that's going to be what does it. So... A failure of cross-sex mind reading in that women wouldn't understand why they would create some arbitrary number of this is how many pumps you're going to give me before we finish or this is how long it's going to last for or this is how whatever else it is. Saying that to a woman is unlikely to cause her to have any additional bonding with you, but to a man placing some sort of challenge in front of him that he can get to achieve whilst also having sex. Sex bit's yes. good, but achieving the... Yes. Okay, so... This together a as a team, together as a team, you achieve that, by the way. That's the vasopressin piece. You, Your brain says, we did this as a team. What else can we do as a team, too? And it makes his brain say, I want to work with you to solve other problems as well, because now I have proven that you are a good, trustworthy ally in my life. That's the key right there. What is the takeaway lesson for women in the bedroom with regards to vasopressin and maximizing that for men? Stop not asking for orgasms. Stop just letting it not happen. Stop just laying there and closing your eyes and thinking of England. Actually engage in that it. That's all tell right. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Ladies that are listening, if you want to close your eyes and think of England, that's actually certified by me as something that's totally okay. <laughs> if she could say, hey, look, this is what does it for me. Help me achieve this and I will be your best friend. Uh, and they do it and then tell him that that was amazing and how great it was and do it. To, but mean it. Don't fake it. Don't be don't be pretend. Do it and accomplish it together and then celebrate the win together. That's the other thing is most women are so embarrassed when they have an orgasm. Do it. Embrace it and celebrate the win together as a team. And man, you guys are both have a much better time. I'll just tell you that. What? In your time looking at the sex lives of men and women, mm -hmm. were the most common reasons for women struggling to achieve orgasm? Usually because they have their own attachment issues. So they're either avoidant or they fear oxytocin. So you'll see them pull away during physical intimacy. They will prefer to be facing away from you during sex so that there's not physical emotional intimacy. They will pull away after sex, get their clothes on really fast and try to pull away. And they're not comfortable with that closeness. That's one big one that I work on as oxytocin aversion, usually through um, avoidant attachment. The other is anxious attachment. So they're massively insecure. They are doing the sexual act to try to please their partner. They're, it's not like they're a prostitute. They're trying to make their partner feel good and feel joyous and loving so their partner won't abandon them. They are trying to be useful to their partner. Sex then is a performance. It's an act to make their partner feel good. They are absolutely not focused on their own sex drive at all. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.